Hi everybody, price elasticity of supply. You can learn it in exactly the same way as PED, but just clearly now for supply. Very important that you've watched my previous video on PED, therefore. So PS measures the responsiveness of quantity supply given a change in price. Here is the equation, just like the PD equation, but now supply here. So the percentage change in quantity supplied over the percentage change in price. Just remember, you Q before you P. Remember that? Q before you P. We'll always make sure you get it the right way around. And remember, if you've got raw numbers and you want to convert them to percentage change, there's the equation there, the difference between two numbers, divide by the original number times by 100. We are always going to get a positive number when we compute PES, and that's because of the law of supply. When the price goes up, quantity supply will go up. Positive, positive will give a positive number. When the price goes down, negative, quantity supplied will go down, negative. A negative and a negative will give a positive number. So we'll always have a positive number when we calculate PS because of the law of supply. Therefore, the positive sign is irrelevant. We can ignore that, just look at the actual number when it comes to interpreting elasticity. If that number is greater than one, it means supply is price elastic. And that means for any price change, the change in quantity supplied will be proportionately greater than the change in price. If the figure is less than one, supply is price inelastic, which means that when the price changes, quantity supplied will change, but proportionally less than the change in price. If it's zero again to extreme territories, now zero supply is perfectly price inelastic, which means regardless of the change in price, quantity supply will never change. Uh, infinity supplies perfectly price elastic, and one supplies unit price elastic. So this is exactly the same way of interpreting the figures as with PED. Uh, but it's important that we can use those confidently and uh, you know, use the right terminology when we do calculations. Let's do that now. So the price of a barrel of oil increases from £40 to £60. Let's convert that to percentage change using this equation here. So the difference is 20 divided by the original, which is 40 times 100. That's a 50% increase in price. Quantity supplied increases from 150 to 180 barrels. That's 30 divided by 150 times by 100. That's a 20% increase in quantity supplied. So put those two together, do the calculation, and we get a final PS figure. Leave the sign in, okay? So make sure you leave it in, positive. 0.4. 0.4. That means supply is price inelastic, and if we put the words to that, what does it mean in this case? It means that as the price of oil increases, quantity supplied also increases, but proportionally less, proportionally less than the increase in price. That's the kind of wording you need to use. Okay, so let's go back now and look at diagrams and determinants. So how do we draw supply curves when we know the price elasticity of supply? Well, if supply is price inelastic, we draw our supply curve steep steep like that and that means for any given change in price the responsiveness of quantity supplied will be proportionally less than the change in price if supply is price elastic we draw the supply curve quite shallow which means that when the price changes quantity supply will change but proportionally more than the change in price so draw it shallow for price elastic supply and draw it steep for price inelastic supply when we get to the extremes perfectly price inelastic supply draw vertical perfectly price elastic supply draw horizontal exactly the same concepts as when we did PED, simple stuff. So then what determines whether supply for a good or service is price elastic or price inelastic? Just remember, what noise is made when you open a can of Coke or a can of Pepsi? It's a pssst sound, isn't it? Yeah, you just got to remember that there are three S's in that pssst. In fact, there's a really funny story of how I came up with this. I was teaching PS to my brother and we came to determinants and he could not remember the list. He would always remember the idea once he knew the determinant, but he would always forget something in the list. So then he said, look, Mr. Dahl, right? Yeah, because that's what he used to call me. He says, come on, you know, you come up with all these memory devices, work one out for PS determinants. And I said, look, I'd love to, but there are no vowels. But give me five minutes, I'll come out with something. And I came up with, and he absolutely loved it. He always remembered every single determinant after that. And so will you. It's a very powerful one, one of my favorites. Just think, opening a can of Coke or Pepsi, pssst, three S's in there. So the P stands for production lag. The longer the production lag for a good or service, the more price inelastic supply is going to be. It's very hard to respond by increasing production if there is a long production lag when the price goes up or when demand goes up. Whereas if the production lag is very short, it's very easy to increase production. So supply is more price elastic. Think the level of stocks, okay? So one of the S's is stocks. 
The larger the level of stocks, the more price elastic supply is, is going to be. It's very easy to respond to an increase in price or an increase in demand if you've got lots of stocks. The lower your level of stocks, the more price inelastic supply is going to be. Think about spare capacity that a business has. The more spare capacity, the more price elastic supply is going to be. Because if price goes up or if demand increases and production needs to go up, you can just utilize your spare capacity. Whereas if spare capacity is low, then um, PS is going to be inelastic. Supply is going to be price inelastic. Think about the substitutability of factors of production. The more substitutable factors of production are in a given business, the easier it is to respond by increasing production when the price goes up or when demand increases. So the more substitutable factors of production are, the more price elastic supply is. So for example, you've got a business making cars and vans. Let's say suddenly vans are in much higher demand. The business wants to increase their production of vans. Well, if their factors of production are substitutable, they can move workers from making cars to making vans. They can move capital machinery from making cars to making vans. So that explains it. Whereas if factors of production are not very substitutable, supply is price inelastic. And then we look at time period. Again, in the short run, supply is price inelastic, whereas in the long run, supply is price elastic. And that's because in the short run, we say in economics, there is at least one fixed factor of production, usually two, land and capital. Therefore, in the short run, it's very difficult to increase production. Supply is price inelastic because you can't vary your factors of production. Whereas in the long run in economics, we say that all factors of production are variable, so therefore it's much easier to increase or decrease production. Supply is price elastic. So that covers PS. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you in the next e-elasticity video. It will be XED.